Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habati fillah I thought I would address a comment from one of our brothers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in him and bless us in him with ilm al-nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal al-muttaqabbilan and he said I respect the shaykh but I can't bring myself to be salafi it's not for me meaning that being Salafism is not for him. And someone else jumped in to the discussion and talked about different categories of Salafia. And we're going to just be very brief about this uh, in a short discussion. As we've talked about it, you know, I have a whole series of videos, which is probably over a hundred videos talking about what it means to be Salafi. So I'm going to be very brief. And for those who wish to, they can go back and look at some of those videos or there's many things out there which are on the YouTube and other than the YouTube that are worth studying and listening to our brothers from Ahl Sunnah. And so it's very important, the term Salafi, to understand that it is not a cult, it is not a necessarily a group or a sect per se. It is not something new as many of the people claim. And not everyone who is Salafi, or not everyone who claims they are Salafi, is Salafi. And this goes back to a qaida, a principle, from the scholars in fiqh, in which they say, al-ibra bi haqa'iq laysa bi musammiyat. That the reality of something is not in its name, but it's in its substance. And let me give you an example. If I say to you that this miswak is a uh, is a, a pen, a pen to write with, you would say, no, this is a miswak. And I say, no, I, I'm calling this a pen. I bought it. I paid for it. I'm going to call this a pen. And I'm going to write with it. You would say I was probably crazy. And you would not accept that. Even if I changed the name, and even if I colored it, a color of a blue pen, for example, and I begin to try to write with it, people would not accept this as a pen. Because the reality of something is its substance, not its name. So even though I changed the name, the reality of this is this is still a miswak. This is still something we use to follow the sunnah of the message of Allah وسلم, and brush our teeth with. And... Likewise, a person who claims they are Salafi, that's just a claim. Because now you have people who say Salafi Jihadi. You have all those takfiris like Faisal, Abu Qatada, and, and all the others that I've named, Abu Hamza Misri, and others, who some of them claim they're Salafi or that they're following the Salaf, but they're ba'id on a Salaf. They're very far from the way of the Salaf as Salih. And when we talk about the Salaf, we're talking about the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala, and Ajma'een. And we're talking about the tabi'een, the, the, the companions or students of the Sahaba. And we're talking about the itba'a tabi'een, the uh, students of the tabi'een. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them all and be pleased with them all. Radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een. And this is what we mean when we talk about the salaf. And this is what you'll find in the books. In the classical text, when they refer to the Salaf, they're referring generally to those th first three generations. And firstly, this comes, this concept comes from Ta'zim al Sahaba, you know, the Radiallahu Ta'ala and Majmain, that the Sahaba are great and superior with regards to understanding the religion of Islam in every way, from fiqh to manners, to creed, that their way or menhaj or methodology is superior. So that is first and foremost what it means to be Salafi is to adhere to that principle. That we believe that that, so we don't believe our opinions are better. And that we have a new way of understanding Islam in contemporary times. We should do this, even though Sahaba understood it this way, or that they, especially when it comes to creed, especially when it comes to aqidah and creed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
in praise of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, and they are the asl of the Salaf. Qala subhanahu wa sabakuna al-awwaluna min al-muhajireen wal ansar wal-ladhina i'tabahum bi ihsan radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhu wa adda lahum jannatin tajri tahtiha al-anhar khalidina fiha abada thalik al-fawzu al-azim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem in surah al-tawbah he subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa sabakuna al-awwaluna min al-muhajireen wal ansar well, in song, he says, and the uh, the first, you know, who raced to goodness from the muhajirin wal ansar. Who are the muhajirin and who are the ansar? The muhajirin are those sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, who made hijra. They immigrated from Mecca to Medina. And the ansar are those who accepted them in Medina. All of them sahaba. Radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, Muhajirin wal insar, waladhina tabi'hum bi ihsan. And those who follow them in righteousness. So that is dalil and evidence to follow them in righteousness. And that those who follow them in righteous also fit under this category. And they are the Salaf al-Saleh. And they are later what we refer to as the Salafiin in contemporary times. The, Sal the uh, Salafis. But throughout history, they had different names from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Ahlul Athar, Ahlul Hadith, Firqat al Najia, many different names that the Salaf and those who adhere to their methodology in Minhaj had these names Ahlul Athar, okay, Ahlul Hadith, the people of Hadith. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, he says after that, about after mentioning the Sahaba, the Muhajirin wal Ansar, and those who follow them in righteousness, Allah says about them how he subhanahu wa ta'ala views them. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, he says, radiyallahu uh, bi ihsan, uh, radiyallahu anhum, Allah is pleased with him. Wa radu anhum. And he is, and, and they are pleased with him. They're pleased with their Lord because they're following the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. That's what it means to follow the Salaf and the Madhab of the Salaf. And Allah says that He has prepared for them uh, gardens underneath which rivers flow Jannah, paradise. And they will dwell in it forever. And that is the great success. So that lets us know that that's the path we want. It's the path of the Sahaba. And because you have the name Salafi does not guarantee that you fit that category. No. It's not a claim. It's not a name. It comes with actions. It comes with practice. It comes with understanding the deen. It comes with manners. It comes with all the aspects of the deen. Of trying your best to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go forward and adhere to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as your menhaj and as the masdar or the origin of your religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, which further affirms for us to follow the Salaf, the, the Sahaba, Tabi'in, with Taba'a Tabi'in. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayr al-nas qarni thumma ladhini yalunuhum, thumma ladhini yalunuhum. The best people are those of my generation. Who are they? Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala, anu majma'in. Then those who follow them. Then those who follow them. That lets us know that's the first three generations. And that's how the ulama, the classical scholars, looked at those nasus for Dalil to follow the Salaf. And there's so much. The Prophet ﷺ said, If tarakat al Yahuda al Ita was a bain firqa. Was it tariku uh if tarakat al Nasara al Itnatain was a bain firqa? Was it tariku have he umma la thalata was a bain firqa? Kullaha fin nar illa wahida. Kalu men here ya Rasulullah. Kala men kana la mithu makana alayhi was habi. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Jews will break into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects. My umma. In the 73 sects, we will break into sects. That's why we have all these groups. We have all the contemporary sects, and now we have many jama'at groups. Akhwana Muslimin, Jama'at al-Takfir wa Hijra, Jama'at al-Sheikh Faisal, Jama'at al uh, all these other groups and sects. He follows under the Takfiris in general. We have Al-Qaeda, we have ISIS, all those groups, they're all Takfiri. Uh, jihadi takfiri, meaning they have jihad placed upon their hawa and their desires and rebellion and overthrowing instead of um, based on the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and the method of the Salaf. 
and all the Sufi groups that fall under their various t groups of Tasawwuf and their leadership, they're, they're not included in that jama'ah that the Messenger of Allah mentioned. So he said that my ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire. Doesn't mean just because you're that, you're guaranteed the fire. No, it means that if you're on that madhab, that is the path to the fire. But maybe Allah will forgive you. Maybe you will make tawbah. Maybe you will be excused for ignorance. That's with Allah Azza wa Jal. But in general, they fall under that wa'id. They fall under the threat of punishment. Kulluha finnar al wahida. All the groups, they're in the fire. Jama'at al tabliq, Akhwan al all of those groups as a group, as individuals amongst that group, they'll be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't say because you're a Khwani, you're going to the hell. You can't say that. So anyone who's from Ahl Sunnah and knows and understands the Qawaid and Asul, they'll know that we don't say, oh, he's Tabliki, he's going to the hellfire. You can't, you can't say that. But instead we say that that group is deviated from the path to Jannah. The Sabila Mu'mineen. The Sabil of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, in Majmain. And then he said, Kullaha fin nar ala wahada. All of them in the fire except one. And then they said, Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Those are upon what I'm upon and my companions, radiallahu ta'ala, in Majmain. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, also said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulifa ar rashidin al mahdiin. Adu alayha bin nawajid. Wa iyaku wa muhtathir al muwa fa inna kulla bid'atin dalala. Dalala. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, it's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, meaning the Abu Bakr, Wa Umar, Wa Uthman, Wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and uh, It's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of my rightly guided Khalifa, those four. Uh, and alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, adu alayha bin nawajid. Bite or cling onto it with your molar teeth. Your molar teeth is in the back. It's in the back of your mouth there. That means if I want to bite this with my molar, I have to bite, get in there. I can't right there. No, I got to, you know, get up in there. All the way back there. So the Prophet ﷺ made that tashbih and that, that, that clear um, way for us to understand that you got to cling to that sunnah because there's going to be so many ideologies and so many so much bid'ah to challenge you. So many new groups. You're going to see splitting even between Ahl Sunnah. You're going to see this shaykh saying this. People blind following this one. People making blind uh, ta'asib of this one. People saying he's always on the haq and this one's on the haq. But the haq is the haq. The truth is the truth. Regardless of men. And the Salaf used to say, Al-Rijal la yuraf we don't know the truth from men. Meaning, you don't look at a man and you say, oh, that's the haq. You know, everything he says is true. Sheikh so-and-so. My Sufi Sheikh or my Salafi Sheikh. It doesn't matter. You can't say, oh, he's always on the haq. His fatwa is 100% right all the time. No. Prophet said, All the children of Adam make mistakes and the best of them are those who repent. So we know the men by the haq. That means we put men on the scale of the truth. That means you have to know the truth. You have to do talab al-ilm. So many people want to speak. Look how many people, when I look at this, how many people make takfir of me only because of their blind defense of ahl bid'ah and ahwa like Faisal. Takfiri, hardcore. He's not even a lightweight. There's no way some people say, oh, he made some mistakes. He came up with six or seven period. P uh, uh, pillars of Islam, jihad and al wala wal bara. Where is this from the Salaf? Who from the Salaf had this understanding? This is pure bid'ah, khalis. This is pure bid'ah. Don't make excuse for a mubtadi'ah. This guy had a minhaj of bid'ah. Bid'ah, 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 bid'ah. Everywhere to the right, to the left, and front and behind. Bid'ah. And his bid'ah leads to shedding blood. The guy made takfir like he was drinking water. How can you excuse this? How can you follow bid'ah on this level and be blinded just because you don't like the leaders, just because you want to make takfir, you want to sit in the UK, you want to sit in America, you want to sit in Australia and make takfir of the Muslim leaders, but yet you live in a country which is khalis on kufr? 
What, where is this understanding? Who from the Salaf? Men sabaka be had the cold. The Salaf used to say this. When they heard bid'ah and craziness like this, they used to say, Men sabaka be had the cold. Who said this before you? Who came up with this qa'id and these principles before you? Who did this? From Ahl Sunnah. La yunkin, la yujid. You don't find it. But it said you want to defend battle. Defend battle and go with battle. Call us kafirs. Call us hypocrites. We don't care. Because battle just leads to battle. You're on Dalal and you keep on Dalal. So it's very important, my brothers and sisters, to adhere to the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam based on Kitabi, La wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf. And the only way you're going to get that is by studying those books. Study those texts. Study the tafsir. And don't just pick and choose. Study it on the hands of Ahl al-Ilm. It's the only way. I'm sorry. I'm pr I promise you, you, you benefit. Study about those things that are going to take you to Jannah. Are you telling me you can sit in America and you can sit and talk about the latest crisis in Saudi Arabia or the latest crisis in Indonesia or this leader did this, Sisi did this, this one did this? That's going to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course we're concerned about if we see sin, if we see open sin, if we see no one is free from mistakes, leaders and the, and the people. But are you telling me this bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It helped you pray. It helped you fast. It helped you draw nearer to your Lord because Ibadah is seeking to come closer to Allah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, what did he say about Ibadah? He said, Ibadah, Ism Jami'ah. It's a, it's a comprehensive term. Ism Jami'ah. Likulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af'al wa aqwal al-dahir wa batin. He said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, and he was he exemplified the method of the Salaf. We're not followers of Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. We're not followers of Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab. But we love them because of their adherence to the Sunnah and their revival of the creed and the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. That's why we love them. That's why we quote from them. Because of that, but not because they're from such and such country or this or that and the other. And we no. And mistakes that they make, we don't follow those. And that's why they call him Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Why? Because he was a vast mountain of knowledge and a reviver of the madhab of the Salaf. We know so much about the madhab of the Salaf. Of course, from those classical texts, but also what Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote. His books are full of mountains of knowledge of the, 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 the creed and minhaj of the Salaf as -Saleh. That's why we, we love him. Rahim Allah Ta'ala. And so... The last point I want to mention, so Salafi is for you. But not calling yourself into a clique and a group. I don't care if you listen to me. I don't care who you listen to. As long as they're calling you to the book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the understanding of the Salaf. But if they're calling you some new contemporary Islam, some new, new type of fiqh, some new type, then that's what I'm concerned for you. And do not listen to the people. Somebody made a ta'liq or they tried to answer your question about the Salaf. They said, hey, Salafis aren't all bad. You know, they're in three categories. They took this battle from Yasser Qadi. Absolute falsehood from Yasser Qadi. And we'll be talking about that later in the future. But I just, I'll wait when I have more time to, to edit what I've already written. I writ, wrote 20 pages about this. About what his, his article, which had a lot of battle in it, in uh, 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 a lot of falsehood. A lot of mistakes. That's his opinion. But men sabaka who be had who preceded him in those statements, those statements come from his studies more or less at Princeton University and those kind of places. Why? Because who preceded him with those categories? The politicals, the uh, jihadis, and the, what was the third one? The apolitical Salafis or the clerical establishment. Claiming that they're also under his category it's just a different type of Salafiyyah when you talk about Faisal and those Tekfiris. No. And ISIS and the Khawarij. At the same time, Yasir Qadi has written and refuted those guys and said that Salafis would be most in position, the quietest Salafis, as he quotes, would be in the best position to refute them because they know the language and they speak the terminologies and they're aware of those uh, Aqidah and the, and the falsehood in that Aqidah. So, Habitifillah, it's not in a name. 
and it's not in a claim, but it's in adhering to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's not about a personality. We're not medkhalis, we're not uh, jammies, we're not this, we're not that. We regard them as our scholars. Scholars that we love and that we know that made yusibu yukhti, made mistakes, and were correct in some issues. But we know that their usul, their foundation, was basically based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and exalting the madhab of the Salaf. This is why we love them. We put them on the mizan, the scale of Salafiyah. So... Understand, we're not inviting you to a click or a cult. We're inviting you, just giving you dawah, calling you to what? And there's a beautiful statement, and I wanted to read it. It's the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and where he said basically that there's no harm in calling and adhering to the madhab of the salaf. Rather, it's wajib to follow the madhab of the salaf. Not to necessarily call yourself salafi, but you must follow what the salaf were upon, because the Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرَ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينِ يُلُونُهُمْ the best people are those of, uh, of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept a good and forgive our evil.